Hello and welcome back to Field Study, an exploration of wild food and the landscape. So the intention for this week's video was to show you some of the stuff that's happening in the village at the moment as we slowly drift into beautiful autumn days. Um, as you can see here around me, all of the leaves on the trees are still green. The autumn comes to the Isle of Wight, especially my village, which is right on the south coast, uh, later than most places in the UK. So whilst they're having frosts up in parts of Wales and everywhere else is basking in like a, a surge of mushroom growth, um, we're a little bit later on in the season. So I had intended to just go out and show you some of the beautiful things um, around my village. It's a season of early morning mists and windfall apples and uh, rainstorms, etc. But whilst I was busy doing that, something happened that I've been waiting for for so long. And that is, we experienced one of the biggest gluts of mushrooms um, in the spots around my village. So elsewhere on the Isle of Wight is pretty low lying. My village is quite high up. So we need a significant amount of rainfall uh, before our mushrooms start to pop. And we had that last week. So what it's meant is this week I've been able to go out and harvest a, a good amount of mushrooms. So this video is dedicated to that. So thank you for coming on this video. Sit back, relax, and join me as we go foraging for early autumn mushrooms here in the great British countryside. Stay tuned. Look at that low sun. It's like a river of mercury. We're definitely knocking on the door of autumn. So this little find has actually made my morning because um, this is quite late on in the season for this particular fungi. This is sort of known as a summer mushroom. You get it from sort of May to September um, where I am. And here we are, sort of end of October, and it is still fruiting. So I believe the, the current name for this, the current Latin name is Seriaporus squamosus. And it is a delicious edible mushroom, especially if you get it relatively young like this. Um, they grow extremely big. I've got a video on how to identify them that I'll link up in the top corner. But they grow extremely big. They're one of the largest capped fungi that we have here in the UK. So as you can see, this fungus is growing out of a tree. So it's growing out of this lovely tree stump here. And it is a shelf fungus, like a bracket fungus. Um, and it has these really distinctive feather-like scales on the top, which gives it its other name, which is the pheasant's back mushroom. Um, but if we cut this off, oh, then underneath we can see it has a network of pores instead of gills. So this sponginess underneath the cap and this feather-like pattern on the top tells us that we have our dryad saddle mushroom. So these are relatively young specimens, so they will be nice and soft and good for slicing through and putting in the dehydrator. They do get a little bit tough and woody, especially towards the stem when they get a little bit older. And like I say, these are one of the largest capped fungi that we have in the UK, so they do get absolutely massive. And the beautiful thing about this particular fungi is that when it is young and fresh and raw, if you, if you smell where you've cut it, it smells like a cucurbit. It smells um, cucumbery, almost like melon rind, uh, like the rind of a watermelon. And it is really, really beautiful. Um, as they get slightly older, I think they go a little bit more mousier, uh, more straw-like, more barnyard. But there's always that in the background. Um, but yes, yeah, so it smells distinctly like watermelons, which is another way that you can identify this mushroom. Once it's cooked, unfortunately, that flavor doesn't transfer uh, into dishes afterwards. It just, um, it creates a lovely sort of umami, mushroomy back note. Um, and this is what this is really, really good for. It is an excellent base to build other flavors on. So when you powder this down and make it into a soup stock, it is really good at carrying and um, intensifying other flavors. So I think it's really, really versatile and often overlooked. And for that reason, it will be coming home with me. It is a really, really welcome find. Beautiful. <laughs> oh. 
So as it's a beautiful morning out today, I thought I'd take a slight little detour to one of my uh, field mushroom spots and I'm glad I did because all of that rain that we've had over the last week seems to have brought out another flush. And these ones are absolutely beautiful. They are so moist and like snappable even because of the amount of rain that we've had. Um, it's really gonna be quite impressive, I think. For the next couple of days, we're coming into the weekend now. Uh, so I'm gonna be spending a lovely weekend in this field that overlooks the sea, picking field mushrooms, um, ready to dry, powder, and use in soups and stuff over the, over the winter period. Um, so yeah, that sounds like an absolutely fantastic weekend in my book. It's that rain that we had recently, I think Storm Babette came in over the last couple of days and absolutely hammered down. Um, loads of the fields around here are saturated and really, really muddy. But what it has done is uh, got us a little flush of lots of the grassland species of mushrooms, um, including these, which I'm very, very happy about. Um, and I'm glad I came out walking today. It's, uh, it's a beautiful place to pick mushrooms. Be sure to check out the links in the description below. Uh, the online foraging community is growing at a rate of knots at the moment, especially as we go into mushroom season. There are loads of killer mushroom recipes out there, so I'll link as many of them as I possibly can in the description below. Uh, and there's also lots of resources for people that are just getting into foraging. That's for plants, fungi, anything like that. There is always, in my videos, a list of resources, books, and places that you can go on the internet in order to find out more about this fantastic craft uh, this intrinsically human thing that we do um, is so good. <laughs> it is mushroomy. There is a hint of aniseed in there. It is deep. It is rich. It is autumnal. Um, and it's really, really pretty as well. This one where it was butted up against another one uh, when it was growing has got like a slight wave and undulation to its gills. Um, it reminds me of, uh, there's a painting called Mushrooms by William Nicholson. Um, and yeah, it's a beautiful still life. And this is an almost perfect example of a wonky field mushroom. Love it. <laughs> oh my word, I am so glad that I came back and waited a couple of days um, for the, the flush of mushrooms here really to come through because there is so many, this, this field is absolutely brimming with them um, and yeah it's really really good to see and there are loads of little ones so I know that over the course of the next week, two weeks I can keep coming back and uh, start picking them for my breakfast which I'm very very excited about. So I've managed to fill up quite a good basket's worth, I don't know how much that weighs. Do you like my new basket, by the way? Got it from an antique shop. It's uh, absolutely beautiful, and it feels really, really nice in the hand as well. Um, and it's a, a nice small basket to have. It's good to have baskets of different sizes. Uh, but yes, I've managed to fill this up. It is smelling absolutely fantastic. Now, one of you asked a question on my field mushroom identification video about when it is best to pick the field mushroom um, and when the flavor is the best and uh, like stages of ripeness, etc. Uh, Submariner Joe, I think that was your name. Thank you for the question. Excellent question. So in my opinion, uh, field mushrooms and all members of the agaric family, like horse mushrooms and the prints and things, they taste pretty good and mushroomy at every single stage of their growth. However, as they grow, their texture change. So from a culinary point of view, that's quite interesting. So button mushrooms are almost, they're dense and tight and snappable. They've got a lot more tooth to them. Uh, bites so they can be used in that sort of way uh, for when you need more texture in your mushroom dish. Um, and then when they open up a little bit like this and the, the gills are still relatively pink, you get mushroominess, but it is that sort of like light mushroominess. I don't know, it's like peach skins to me. Uh, I don't know what that even means. Just bear with me here. Um, but yeah, so it's got that sort of light mushroominess and you can use them in any way that you'd use like a portobello mushroom, uh, shop-bought mushrooms, anything like that. 
and then we have the final stage of their growth when they've been open for a good few days up to a week sometimes the stipe starts to split like this and the gills go really really dark brown to black this one here is a prime example it was growing in a clump with the others and you can see the spore print of one of its uh, one of its neighboring mushrooms um, is on the top there so it's covered in sort of dark brown black spores um, but yes, so when they get to this stage, in my opinion, they are at their most mushroomy. Mushroom <laughs> they are at their most mushroomy. So they are absolutely perfect for dehydrating and turning into mushroom stock powder. It is important to bear in mind that when you're harvesting agaricus mushrooms, field mushrooms, horse mushrooms, uh, you will get lots of different stages of growth in one basket because when a flush comes up, not all of the mushrooms uh, grow at the same rate. So you will have everything from little pins to uh, button mushrooms to ones that are sort of dark and frumpy and have been trampled to death by cows. Um, so bear in mind when you go out you'll probably come back with a basket full of mushrooms at different stages of growth just like we've got here. So thank you very much for all of the questions and comments on that video and if you are at all curious on how to safely identify agaricus mushrooms, field mushrooms etc then please click on the link and go and watch it. I try to put as much detail in it as possible so you can keep yourself safe, um, arm yourself with the correct amount of knowledge and just stay away from any of the toxic lookalikes that there are out there. So if you're at all curious, I'll put it in the description below, upstairs in the thing. Um, so yeah, go check that out. But I think flavor-wise, they are unparalleled for adding mushroominess into dishes that need mushroominess. So when they get to this stage, I like to dry them out, powder them, and then put it in like butternut squash soups um, in the autumn time. Christmas time, I whack it in gravies, uh, loads of stuff like that. But I'm actually gonna do something quite special with these ones today. So I'm going to take these home, hopefully avoid the rain shower that's gonna come in, and I am going to clean them up a little bit. They got a little bit dirt on. Um, and I am going to cold smoke them. So I like doing this with mushrooms because they take on quite a lot of smoky flavor relatively quickly. So I'm gonna whack these in the cold smoker and then I'm gonna dehydrate them to create a smoked mushroom powder. Now, trust me, it is one of the most killer ingredients you'll ever use. Whack it in like a chili con carne, uh, just to like emphasize the smokiness of the smoked paprika. And it just gives like a really earthy backbone to any sort of meal like that. Um, it is really, really versatile and a joy to play with. Right, it is a new day. We've had plenty more rain, so I'm gonna carry on my walk and see if there's any more mushrooms knocking around because this has got me really, really excited. <laughs> so yes, come on then. So I was walking down this beautiful pathway that leads into my favourite patch of woodland and um, I wasn't expecting to see much actually because this has been cut back extensively, it's been relatively dry and sometimes you get a little flush of am amethyst deceivers. Um, I did a little video last year that was from this little spot, it's on the side of a pathway so it gets trampled quite a lot and uh, they cut everything back very aggressively this year. But Excitingly, uh, there are a few little amethyst deceivers starting to pin here. So I'll show you them. They're like beautiful little purple jelly babies. So I will definitely be walking the dog past this spot in the next couple of days uh, to pick these when they're absolutely at their best. Um, maybe I'll make that into another video. I've got some interesting recipes with amethyst deceivers that might surprise you. So uh, we'll come back to that later on in the week, I reckon. But yeah, it's really, really good to see. I'm really glad I came out today. It's actually shaping up to be quite a productive little flush. So that storm that we had pass over us um, has really, really brought out the mushrooms. So I'm thankful for that. Hello, you joined me here in my study. Uh, I'm just editing the video together and I forgot to record an outro, an ending. So uh, thank you very much for watching this week's video. Uh, I'm just about to head out now and look for some more mushrooms. We've had even more rain. So you can look forward to another mushroomy video next week. Um, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and hit subscribe for more foraging videos from this beautiful landscape. Until next week, take care.